Today we will practice graphing a line using a single point and the slope. So let's get started. So graphing a line using a point and the slope is like having a treasure map. And we start in one point, and we're told we need to take a certain number of steps north. And then we're going to turn east and do another fixed number of steps. And wherever we land, that's X marks the spot, and that's where the treasure is. The slope of the line tells us how to move, and that point tells us where to start. So let's see an example. So here we have the point negative 1, negative 2. And we plot that point on our graph, and this is our starting point. We have a slope of 3 halves. So that means we're going to rise 3 and run 2. And we can put a point there. Now from this second point, let's rise 3 and run 2. And that's the location for our third point. Connecting these points, we get our line. So let's graph the line that passes through the point negative 4, negative 1, with a slope of 2 thirds. Let's start by writing down what we know. Well, we have the point negative 4, negative 1, and this point is on our line. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that point. So starting at the origin, we'll move to negative 4 on the x axis, and then down to negative 1. So here is our starting point, negative 4, negative 1. We also know the slope. We have a slope equal to 2 thirds. So that means we're going to rise or go up 2 and run, go to the right, 3. So from this point, we're going to rise 2 and then run 3. And here's our second point. Now let's do this again. We're going to rise 2 and run 3. And here's a third point. And then we can connect those points. We get the line that passes through the point, negative 4, negative 1, with a slope of 2 thirds. Now let's look at one with a negative slope. Again, what do we know? Well, we have a point. We have the point 1, 3 that's on our line. So plotting that point, we're going to move to 1 on the x-axis and then up 3. And this point is our starting point, the point 1, 3. We also know the slope is negative 1 half. I intentionally put the negative sign out in front. Now we can rewrite this as negative 1 all over 2. And if we write it this way, that means we're going to rise negative 1. That means we're going to go down. And we'll run 2. So we'll go 2 in the positive direction. So from our start point, we're going to rise negative 1. So we're going to go down 1 and run 2. And here's the second point on the graph. Now we can repeat this. We can go down 1, so a rise of negative 1, and a run of 2. But we can also view this in a different way. Instead of the negative on top, we can put that negative in the denominator. 1 over negative 2. That means our rise is 1, we'll go up 1, and the run is negative 2. We'll go to the left in the negative direction, two spaces. And we'll start at our start point. We're going to go up 1 and to the left 2, and then we can repeat that, up 1 and to the left 2. And connecting our points, 
we can draw our line. If the slope is negative, so that means m is less than 0, we're going to have either a negative number on the top and a positive number on the bottom, or a positive number on top and then the negative on the bottom. Because to have a negative number, one of these has to be negative. So when we do division and the result is a negative number, we're dividing either a positive number by a negative number or a negative number by a positive number. And it does not matter if the negative is on top or bottom. So looking at the previous graph, if the slope is positive, meaning our m is greater than 0, well, that means we're going to have either a positive number over a positive number, or we can have a negative number over a negative number. To have a positive number, both the numerator and the denominator need to have the same sign. So for this example, we could have also done slope equal to negative 2 over negative 3. These negatives cancel out and simplify down to 2 thirds. And what that means is we will rise negative 2, so we'd go down 2, and run negative 3. We'll move to the left three spaces. So let's practice a few more. So we have the point 4, 7, and a slope of 2. So we'll start by plotting that point. So we start at the origin. We're going to move to 4 on the x-axis, and then up 7. And this will be our starting point. Now let's look at that slope. So here we have a slope of 2, and we can rewrite this as a fraction. And this is 2 over 1. When you have an integer for the slope, that number will be the numerator, or the rise, and then the denominator, the run, will be 1. So this means we're going to rise 2, and then run 1. So from here we're going to go up 2, and to the right 1. And if I do this again, I'm, I'm near the edge of my graph. So now let's go in the opposite direction. And instead of using 2 over 1, let's have our slope be equal to negative 2 over negative 1. Again, negative 2 divided by negative 1 is still 2. So that means we have a rise of negative 2 and a run of negative 1. So from this point, we're going to go down 2 and to the left 1. And from this third point, we're going to go down 2 and to the left 1. And from these points, we can draw our line. Doing a quick check, I have a positive slope. And my line goes up from left to right. For this last problem, we have the point 3, negative 5 and a slope of negative 3 fifths. We'll start by graphing that point. So we'll move to 3 on the x-axis, and then with a y-coordinate of negative 5, we're going to go down 5. So this is our starting point. Now let's look at that slope. So first, I'm going to rewrite the slope with the negative value on top. So we have negative 3 fifths. So we will rise negative 3, that means we'll go down 3, and run 5. So from our starting point, we're going to go down 3 and run 5. So 
If I try that again, I will fall off my graph. So down three, it looks like I can only go three spaces to the right. So I can't get another point on this particular graph. So now let's go in the other direction. To do this, I will put the negative sign in the denominator. So we'll have 3 over negative 5. Again, these are all the same value. Negative 3 fifths is equal to negative 3 over 5, which is also equal to 3 over negative 5. In this form, we have rise of 3 and a run of negative 5. So starting at that original point, we'll go up 3 and to the left, 5. And then we'll repeat the process. We'll go up 3 and to the left, 5. Now we have four points. And when I'm graphing a line from a point and a slope, I will typically do at least three points. And then we connect those dots to draw our line. Doing a quick check, we have a negative slope and our line goes down from left to right. A great way to learn is to practice on your own. We will discuss in a bit, but go ahead and pause your screen and do these two problems. In this first problem, our initial point is at 9 comma 4. We have a slope of 3 sevenths, so we'll rise 3 and run 7. In this case, with this graph, if I go up 3 and then to the right 7, I'm off the graph. So to graph this, I rewrote the slope as negative 3 over negative sevenths. A negative divided by a negative is a positive number. These two fractions are the same thing. But this gives me a rise of negative 3. So from the starting point, we're going to go down 3. And then we have a run of negative 7. So we'll go to the left, 7 units. And then we'll repeat that process. We'll go down 3 and run to the left, 7. For this last problem, we have a point of 7, 8 and a slope of negative 1. So we start by graphing that point, 7, 8. And then with a slope of negative 1, we can write this as negative 1 over positive 1 or positive 1 over negative 1. All three of these mean the same thing. They have the same value. From that starting point, we can rise 1 and move to the left 1. Or we can rise negative 1, which means go down 1, and then move to the right 1, ending up with our line. Continue practicing graphing a line from a slope and a point, and I'll see you in the next video.